Right. Now, as tempted as I was to make some dramatic thumbnail that's like, oh my god, I'm stranded in the middle of nowhere with no reception and all that shit. Uh, I just thought I'd do this video to give you a bit of an idea of what I do when things go pear-shaped. So, let's start with what's wrong and lead to what I did about it. Just a reminder, somewhere in this episode there is a code word. I obviously wasn't thinking about code words while I was filming this. I didn't even think it would be an episode. So, yeah, code words somewhere in my in this episode and you can win a copy of my book. All right, so beautiful beach in Asperance, as you can see. Stunning beach, just sitting there under the awning. And um, I don't want to be here. I blew my diff. It sounds terrible. So I was just cruising along, um, not doing anything crazy, went up a little hill, parked, unhitched the camper, and then started to move off and it just went dun, 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 dun. And um, yeah, it's, I think it's uh, either the crown wheel or pinion, probably the crown wheel has missing a tooth. That sounds like hell. And um, yeah, lovely. So these people next to me are gonna, they're gonna tow my camper out. Well, I'm gonna put this thing in the back of a truck and um, send it into Esperance Toyota and hopefully we can get a part and chuck a new diff back in this thing. This sucks a lot. So as I said, my, my diff's blown, right? It's a couple of teeth missing off the crown wheel or something and I don't know, it's broken. It's probably going to be covered under warranty by Toyota because I've had issues with my rear end before and I suspect that they caused this issue. Um, uh, I've had like seal issues and things like that. I reckon so, there's just something wrong with my rear diff. I actually, I'm going to push Toyota to just replace the whole, the whole rear axle. Um, but I thought I'd just give you a rundown of what I do in these situations. I've broken down plenty of times. I had a 30 year old 80 series before this. I'm used to breaking down. So what I did is I got this dude on the beach to tow my camper trailer to the spot that I wanted to camp at anyway. I planned to camp here for a week regardless. Um, so I thought, well, the car moves. So I, I just I just put the car where I wanted it. I got this dude to put my camper trailer where I wanted it, which is just a ridiculously stunning location. Um, I've got 600 watts of solar, 620 watts of solar. So my batteries are fully charged by 9.30 in the morning. Um, running the two fridges and you know even running the laptop and charging things and whatever like everything is fully charged look at this like <clears throat> everything's at 100% um, <clears throat> I literally can't I can't use the power that I've got um, so I've got 120 watts on the roof 200 watts here in the companion one 300 watt KT solar plugged into this by the way, these reflective blankets are the ducks, the absolute ducks nuts. Now, <clears throat> now you're thinking, what am I gonna do about the car? Well, that's actually not that hard. The car does move. It's just that when it drives, it goes kunk, kunk. So I think I can nurse it off the beach, low range. It, w it works better for some reason with the locker in, don't know why. So, <clears throat> I think I can nurse the car off the beach. If I couldn't, I would just go and find some people to pull me off the beach. Uh, I'd probably get two people, snatch straps, winch over things if I needed to. It'd be slow. And the way to, the way to solve this is to always have a little bit of cash. I carry about 500 bucks cash, just in case, because for situations like this. So, um, I'd, you know, give them, say, say, hey guys, I'll give you a hundred bucks if you can pull me off the beach. And it's only, what, three Ks? Um, hundred bucks, get me off the beach. From there, I've got top cover with RAC, so RAC will tow me into town. So that sorts that problem out. Um, 
So once I'm off the beach, it's, it's easy. And they'll tow, tow the camper as well. Then you go find some Nissan driver or something, probably the same person who pulled me out, pulled the car out. Um, and you go, oh, I've just got a little broken Toyota. Do you think you could pull my camper trailer out with your big manly Nissan? And they're always like, shit, yeah. You know how, how grunty my car is? Um, so that's always easy. <laughs> Um, people love to prove that their car is better than yours, um, and it you, you can use it to your advantage quite quite easily. So, <clears throat> uh, getting the trailer pulled off the beach is is pretty easy, um, uh, and then from there the trailer will be hitched onto the back of the tow truck that tows my car. Uh, they usually put on a flat tray, um, so that's again that's so that's that's that part sorted. Car and trailer then get sorted out, go into dealership. Um, dealership will then confirm that the repair will take more than 24 hours. That then classifies it as a major breakdown. Now this is important because RAC will only tow you 300 Ks um, for free. However, if it's a major breakdown, a major breakdown is a, a repair that will take more than 24 hours, there's no limit. Therefore, they will tow my car to Perth to be repaired because Esperance Toyota is booked out for a month. So. That's where the good bit comes in. They'll also pay for a flight home or a hire car, or something like that. So that comes, that leads me to the next bit, the hire car. So tomorrow morning, my plan, oh, by the way, Sam and Bill are flying down here to meet me to come camping. So <clears throat> tomorrow morning, I am going to walk to um, a popular beach, which is not far from here, it's about three Ks. Um, and there are usually lots of people there. And I'm just gonna ask all of them if anyone is heading to Esperance and try and hitchhike into Esperance. From there, I'm gonna collect a Prado, which I've hired. Now that hire is gonna be quite expensive because I need it to be a one-way hire. So as in, I'm picking it up in Esperance and I'm gonna drop it off in Perth. For five days plus the relocation fee, it's gonna be about 1200 bucks. In fact, it'll probably end up being about 1400 bucks because I'll have to put extra Ks on it because I only get 100 Ks a day allowance. So, I reckon RAC will cover a portion of that, um, but it's one of those things that I just, I've always budgeted in. I've always budgeted, but for the last two years, my car hasn't cost me anything in breakdowns and repairs and stuff. This is a rare occasion, and you just, in these situations, you just have to have some money aside to go, okay, cool, this stuff happens, make, make it work, right? Because um, <clears throat> you, you, you'd think, oh, I'll just, just fly home. That guy there can't get on a plane, hence the hire car. Um, I don't know if I'm allowed a dog in a hire car. I don't really care. I'm just going to cover all the seats in the sheets from the camper um, and get him home. Anyway, that's what I do in these situations is always give it a day if you po if you can. Like if you're if you're broken down and the tide's coming up, that's one thing. I usually just park up where I can, crack a tin, light a fire, cook myself some dinner, relax. And when you're not stressed, you can make better decisions, you can see things with perspective, and you can make the most of it. This is going to be a great holiday. It's just going to cost me $1,400 more than I thought. So be it. So be it. I mean, hold on. I'm not going to deny Sam and Bill this. This is heaven. This is actual heaven. Hey, I'll keep you updated with how it all goes. It's going to be funny. <laughs> Hitchhiking into town tomorrow is going to be funny. All right, quick update. So I just, went, I just walked up the hill to get some reception. I have to walk about half a K or something to get reception here, uh, which is lucky that there is reception. But the rest of the time, I've been using my sat phone flat out. I reckon I have spent an hour on the sat phone on this trip, um, and that's only going to cost me about 30 bucks. Um, <clears throat> and you look at the context of a breakdown, how much time and money can be saved by having a sat phone is phenomenal. Because um, uh, it means people can call me back. It means I don't have to sit up the top of this huge hill all the time. Anyway, that's um, irrelevant. But if you're going to do really remote trips, hire a sat phone or buy a sat phone. They are fantastic. They cost $15 a month to own, 700 bucks to buy. I've had one for a few years and it's, it has certainly made its money back. Now. 
what I did is I called the local caravan park. I uh, spoke to the lady there, she was really nice. Um, Duke of Orleans Caravan Park, such lovely people. She has offered to come and collect me from the beach in her own car, um, first thing tomorrow morning. And then she was having this conversation and she's like, okay, so we're looking for someone who's driving to Esperance tomorrow. And the guy standing at the counter in front of her, number one, he helped me take the thumbnail for my, <laughs> for my Christmas video and went, I'm going to Esperance tomorrow. Tell him he can get a lift with me. So sorted. I've got a lift to Esperance tomorrow. I don't have to hitch. Well, I'm still technically hitchhiking, but really easy. This is the thing. Bring a little bit of cash and a smile and you be amazed what how you can turn a trip from a disaster to a great memory. I'm not, like, I won't remember the 1400 bucks, but I will remember this trip. It'll be something I dine out on. It'll be, it'll be something that I have fun telling people about. And, and like, that's, to me, that's so much more important than, than the, the little bit of inconvenience and money. Um, these are, this is a real adventure. This could have been a boring trip and it's not gonna be. Uh, <clears throat> so it's like getting bogged on a trip, you know, you did like I got so bogged yesterday too <laughs> um, Anyway, and I had to get a farmer to come and pull me out. It was hilarious um, But you know, that's it's all part of the adventure. I've done a lot of walking on this trip. I feel good I feel motivated and I'm having a great time um, and It's it, it's almost better that this has happened not quite I still pre would have preferred a little bit less drama, but it's still bloody good. All right. I should also mention in these, uh, I always carry, I've got multiple forms of communication here, right? So I have a Selfie, which is a mo mobile reception booster, which isn't working here. Uh, I need a, if I was parked, I reckon if I was parked like there, the Selfie would work, but it's, it's not working here. So I've got a, a reception booster. I have a UHF, uh, which I can just put on scan. Um, I carry a PLB. This is, you might be more familiar with an EPIRB, which is a boat one. PLB, personal locator beacon. Basically, this is the old shit button. So, uh, yeah, if I'm really stranded and I can't get help for whatever reason, uh, I can pull this thing. Uh, that would be like if I'd crashed my car in a remote, remote place and I needed, I needed help, or if I was stranded like in the middle of the desert or something like that. Um, <clears throat> the main thing with this, is it's incredibly accurate in terms of location because it's actually got a radio thing in it that so it sends out its signal uh this is a gma one because the, the, the gma is responsible for something like 40 percent of all um successful uh like rescue missions in australia so like they've got a really good track record um they're not the cause of it <laughs> you get what i mean they use their devices um and I trust them, they're good, good Australian made stuff. But um, it, so it sends out a, a, a location and then a plane comes over and the plane can then connect to the radio signal from this thing and get like an exact location. And then if you don't have a sat phone and all that kind of stuff, they actually drop a bundle to you. It's amazing, it's so cool. So they drop like a little parachute thing with a bundle of stuff in it and it contains food, water, sat phone, um, I think a radio and it's when they drop it it like parachutes in and it's got a siren and a light <laughs> and it makes a hell of a racket so you can find it they drop it near you um, and you hear this siren going off you're like what the hell is that because you don't see it coming out from the plane you just see the plane go over because it's obviously up high um, and yeah they drop it like right near you and it's got all the stuff so that's why these things are awesome because they will drop off all the necessary equipment in a life-threatening situation um, there's a great video which I'm gonna link below um, uh, showing this family who actually had that situation in the middle of the Simpson Desert when they bogged their truck. Um, it's fascinating. I loved every second of it. So anyway, so I got that and I got the sat phone. Uh, and I've obviously got a first aid kit and all that kind of stuff as well because that is just every single car should have a first aid kit as far as I'm concerned. Um, I don't care if it's your city runabout, have a first aid kit in it. All of our cars have first aid kits in them and I think they're invaluable uh, i use the um, survival ones uh, survival brand so that is a first aid kit and that is a snake bite kit to remove these these are just on clips so I literally just pull it off see they're just on like these pop clips but i want it somewhere i can get it from that side through i stick my hand through and pull it uh, but yeah they pop off really easily i don't know how many times i've used that medical kit but it's a lot 
um, including when Bill got really sick. Yeah, anyway, so that's that's my safety stuff. It's probably a bit over the top for your average person. You probably don't need a sat phone for your average person. Um, but I think everyone who travels remote should carry a PLB. Um, uh, obviously, everyone's got a mobile. And I really think UHFs are very useful because you can just put it on scan and as soon as you hear someone, you can you can communicate. Also, make sure you, you know, whether, through, whether it's on an app on your phone or um, if you have some sort of a, a secondary navigation device, make sure you know how to figure out your coordinates, your exact coordinates, so that you can radio them to people to come and find you. You don't want to be giving vague directions because you don't know where they are. Um, so yeah, make sure you've got that. Um, Oh, also, there's another app on your phone that everyone should have <coughs> for if you do call triple zero. It is called Emergency Plus. Um, and the great thing about that is it will show you, I'm just going to cover them up, but it, it'll show you the location, but it, specifically you can send it. If you have a reception, you can send that to, to people. So you can just literally hit call triple zero on the app and it sends your latitude and longitude um, uh, to the operator, which makes life a lot easier, um, a lot clearer, uh, particularly when they're like, okay, what road are you on? And you're like, the beach. <laughs> so yeah, um, that is, I, I yeah, I, I don't think anyone should not have that app. It's free. It's not like it tracks you and stalks you or something. It is for emergencies and um, could be the difference. So yeah. Tomorrow. <clears throat> All right, time to, um, Make the long walk over to get picked up and go and get this hire car. Fred is going to be just fine there. He's got a squeaky ball. He's in the shade. He's got lots of water. He'll only be gone for three hours or something. He'll be totally fine. And I've got a little tiny lightweight backpack that I always carry. So if we can see the summit one. Which has slap thongs and a water bottle and sat phone and um, <clears throat> my car keys, locked up the trailer, locked my laptop away, but yeah, we should be all good. All right, getting a lift into town. These guys are giving me a lift. Thank you so much. You're welcome. This is an awesome setup too. It was a 79 series and me breaking down and then me ending up in a graphite 79 series. Anyway. <laughs> Let's go to Esperance. All right, grab my hire car. Go on, go back to Fred, because he was whining as I left. Poor bugger. He was really, didn't want me to go. All right, so I picked up the hire car yesterday, actually. I just forgot to film. Well, I tried to film and I actually took a photo of myself, like an idiot. So, <clears throat> instead of video. Uh, look, I got the hire car, went back to camp last night, filmed a quick video. Um, and now I'm on my way to the airport to go and pick up Sam and Bill. So, um, I have to say, I got back yesterday and it was a bit of a tough one. So, on the way, I cracked the windscreen. Well, I drove past a truck and a truck spat out a big rock and smashed the wind, cracked the windscreen of the hire car. So, I don't know how much that's going to cost me. Just to add to that, I got back and there had been huge winds and it ripped all the pegs out of my awnings and it actually snapped the bush company awning there's a, like a there's a sick like all of my, all the main structural poles were fine but <clears throat> clearly the wind was in such a way that it pushed from the front of the awning up and i didn't have a rope there which is completely my fault like i would i, I would estimate the winds but i was looking at the peaks and i reckon we got hit with like probably close to a 70k an hour wind um, which ripped all the pegs out of the cub awning um, just I just didn't have enough pegs in there and they weren't big enough they weren't sand pegs I just had um, single big pegs dug in a bit so anyway I'm really excited about seeing the family picking them up and taking them back to what is a beautiful spot although hello wife hello hello Billy hello Fred family's back together we're gonna go to the pub for lunch I'm going to go to camp. Oh, and you got a ladybird on your arm. I've got a ladybird on my arm. No, on the window. Free ladybird. Oh. oh. What happened? No, he's good. <laughs> Bugger off. Hey. It's <laughs> <laughs> <That's> close. <laughs> Alright, let's go to the condi. 
Yeah. Right, had a nice little lunch. Billy, you enjoy lunch? No, you didn't have a talk. Fred, you enjoyed the bits that Billy threw on the ground. So we're going to cruise off to camp. And uh, look, <clears throat> I don't think I will film this bit actually. Um, we don't get very many opportunities to have family getaways. So we are going to go and have a little family getaway. Um, and then I'll get back in touch when we're getting the whole shooting match off the beach and how we sort that out. Cheers. Three days later. Oh, it doesn't sound pretty, but we're doing it. Rock crawling is blown to you. Oh, oh, thank you, hire car. Oh, it sounds terrible. Okay, go to the left. Man, my diff sounds so bad. Uh, give it a bit of a wiper. Yeah, thanks. My diff sounds so bad. <laughs> like all the rest of the teeth are gone. That was oh, the worst part, right? I'm sorry, Prado. Oh yeah, absolutely. After this, it's just downhill on a gravel track. All right, so we're getting it out. Thank you Prado, thank you Hire Prado for getting me out. Little sandy track, got up that rock hill. I Sounds terrible. Me, thank you. Sounds terrible. Sam's driving, she's doing a great job. But yeah, we've got out unassisted. And we're all good. Really glad they gave me a good hire car. <laughs> Sad day, seeing this. Bye. All right, welcome to, oh, we're probably about four weeks later now, maybe five weeks later. So what happened with the Prado? Um, so it got trucked back to Perth. That took about two weeks to get home. Um, and RAC covered that. They don't cover the cost of the trailer, so I had to pay a few hundred bucks to get the trailer home. Um, and pro tip there, if you are gonna do that, just talk to the towing company, don't go through RAC, um, because if you go through RAC, they, they charge the quote to be like 1,700, because it's like, like towing a whole extra car. But you talk to the towie, and he goes, I'm already taking your car back. I can hitch the trailer on the back. We'll, we'll do a deal which is exactly what we did. So he, he did, me a, did me a solid because it was, wasn't expensive to get it back. Anyway, um, the hire car, I think will be covered by RAC, but I haven't actually dealt with that yet. I just wanted to figure out exactly what was gonna happen with Toyota, because I wasn't sure if Toyota would cover it. I'd prefer, to Toyota, prefer Toyota to pay for it than RAC because it's kind of more their problem. The diff is cooked. Um, it was a loose bolt somewhere in the carrier. Now, warranty, I took it in. And Toyota said, um, n the vehicle is not factory specifications. They didn't give me any more clarity than that. Um, uh, therefore, the warranty is denied. So it doesn't have it off. So look, it's very obviously not factory specifications. Even a bull bar makes it not factory specifications. Um, so I went back and I said, I'm not happy with that. Uh, I need you to be more clear on exactly what not factory specifications is. Um, and previously when I had an issue with Broome Toyota, um, I, I spoke to some people at Toyota WA and they were really, really helpful. So I had their contact details. So I just went straight to them and I said, guys, you know, this is what's happened. I just, I need a good answer and I need to figure out, look, was it caused by me? Was it caused by something else? Um, if it was, if it was because of my modifications, I wouldn't argue. I would pay for the damage and get it all, get it back on the road. It's about 4,100 for the repair. All up, the whole operation, the towing, everything, retail is about um, 7,000, including the 4,000 repair. Um, so it's a pretty, pretty expensive breakdown, but thankfully I already have the right coverage and things like that. Um, uh, also, if I wasn't under warranty and didn't have RAC, well, this would have been a completely different kettle of fish, I would have ordered a diff from Esperance Toyota, put it in myself and driven home. That's how I would have done this. Um, now, um, what happened with 
the Toyota dealership, sorry, not dealership, Toyota head office, they came out, they inspected the diff, they said that they found a loose bolt in the carrier, um, sorry, a stretch bolt in the carrier, um, and that is a fault, and they, they had said so they hadn't seen it before, and I believe them. Um, so anyway, the diff was replaced under warranty. It's still getting done now, but they have covered it, which is fantastic. Um, that's a real, a real money saver, and yeah, it's, it, it's obviously a bit of a headache. I've, I've been off the road for a few weeks. Um, had to borrow cars and things like that. Everyone I've spoken to has been really good. There was, I'd say there was the, the person who initially rejected my warranty claim was, you know, they've got a very bureaucratic process in Toyota where they just go, no, like this is how we do it, we'll reject it. I would have happily gone to the small claims tribunal or something like that and, and, and fought it. Um, thankfully it didn't come to that, they were really good, but yeah. Uh, now the cause, was nothing to do with my modifications. So the extra, the larger tires made no difference in this case because the crown wheel and pinion were barely touching. That's, you can you can hear it in the video, that they're going Rock crawling is blown diff. Oh, 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 thank you. And they're grinding over the top. There are no full teeth missing. They're just, they're just grazers on the top. And that's because the pinion was so loose that it was able to come away from the crown wheel and it was just, it just wasn't getting any good contact. Um, so yeah, that, that's what happened. It, this does not mean Toyota makes a weak diff. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I know it's gone from a bit of a, what do you do in a survival, well not survival, like a breakdown situation through to what actually happened with the warranty. Um, but it is what it is. I just thought I'd take you along for the ride and give you some full disclosure. Cheers.